For reasons that utterly escape everyone involved, you're listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. Here are your hosts, Gabe Howard and Michelle Hammer. You're listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. I'm the bipolar one, Gabe. I'm the schizophrenic one, Michelle. And today we have, well, Michelle and I are just excited. We have the best idea ever. It's a master debate. It's a master debate. We are going to play what I like to call the Suffering Olympics. The Suffering Michelle, Olympics. What are the Suffering Olympics? The Suffering is the Olympics is who's got it worse, me or Gabe? Clearly oh, you, because clearly. you have schizophrenia. Oh, clearly you, because you're a ginger. <laughs> okay, no, no. Now, now we're, we're not trying to figure out whose life is worse or better, because clearly that would be stupid. I mean, my life is clearly better. You live in a shithole apartment in New York City, and I live in a in a vast, vast home. In Ohio! In... All right, you might, you might have something there. But so specifically, in order to put guidelines on this, because we all know we have to rein in Michelle... We're only going to figure out who has it worse because of their mental illness. So does Michelle have it worse because she's schizophrenic? Or does Gabe have it worse because he's bipolar? And ginger. No, just bipolar. Follow the rules. Are you ginger because you're bipolar? No, the one is not related to the other. Hair color is not a determinant of mental health. Oh my God, no, really? I'm just kidding. I knew that. I knew that. I should say natural hair color is not a determinant of mental health. Because remember when Britney Spears was bald? I mean, that was... Why do you have to bring that up? 2007, Britney Spears was a rough time. You know what? And there's that... No, do you not know there's a meme? Britney Spears alone. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. There's a meme that says, the older (laughs) I get, the more I understand Britney's 2007 meltdown. I think that it's interesting that you're now getting like your facts from memes on Facebook, which is where people get their political facts now. It's true. Everybody understands that as you grow older, things get harder and you might melt down like Britney Spears. Britney Spears is a legend. She's amazing. She was the first CD I've ever received in my life. It was for Hanukkah. And I listen to that CD all the time. Baby, one more for time. Hanukkah. Yes. Before we get into the Suffering Olympics, I want to tell you a story about something that happened to me, but really to you, but it happened to me. So as you know, I was speaking at a conference, a conference about our podcast, and I was introduced and they were like, you know, Gabe Howard, the bipolar half of a bipolar schizophrenic in a podcast. Yay. And they gave me a microphone and I, I cheered and I was like, Hey, this is my bipolar story. And it was wonderful. And I got a big round of applause. And as you know, the crowd yelled, where's Michelle? And it was, there was a lot of fans in the room and it was really great to, to go out live. And after I got off stage, I got off stage and I went clear to the back of the room and out a little side door so I could go to the back. Bathroom. Because as you know, I go to the bathroom every 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Because I have dry mouth because of my medication, so I drink constantly. Diet Coke. Diet Coke. But when I came back in, a guy stopped me and he said, hey, I need to talk to you for a minute. Now, this happens a lot. It's usually like like a personal story about them or a loved one or a question. He said, there's this preacher on YouTube that I got to tell you about. What? And I said, oh, yeah, I know. You're... Right? Right? I I get this a lot. So he tells me all about this preacher, and he says that he's he's got hundreds of hours worth of programming, but that I need to search for this specific sermon that's, that's about eight hours long, like this one playlist. And I need to listen to the whole thing because in it, he explains about the apostles that, that went off to the Gentiles and the apostles that went off to the, the, the Jewish side, I guess. And that he thinks that after I listen to it, I will understand why I need to fire the Jewish girl from my podcast. Whoa! Whoa! Nothing like a little bit of anti-Semitism at a conference. And I, and I, I, I thought maybe that I heard him incorrectly. And I said, I said, what? And he goes, you, you can't, you need to, and he said, and I'm not making this up. You have to fire the Jewish girl. And I said, oh my God, I will not be doing that. And I just, I just walked off. I just, I walked away. And then of course, what happens after that happens over the next like week, I just keep going over and over in my mind, like all of the better things that I could have said to defend you. And for like the first couple of days, I was like, oh my God, this is so horrible that it happened to 
Gabe. Like, I thought this was something bad that happened to me. And then on about day two, I realized that, oh my God, th- this happened to Michelle. Yeah. I am so sorry. It happens. I don't know what the outcome of who has it worse, people with schizophrenia or people with bipolar disorder, is going to be in our great debate that we're eventually going to start. I believe that people with bipolar disorder have it worse. Uh, I know that you believe that people with schizophrenia have it worse. But I I do want to unequivocally state that I think it might be bad to be Jewish. Because of all the stuff that we've accomplished, that's the thing. Also, there was like a skosh of misogyny in there. The Jewish girl. The Jewish... He didn't even say my name. Yeah, he didn't even say the name. Yeah, he didn't say Michelle. He didn't say woman straight up so uh let's 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 move to opening arguments round one of the suffering olympics this is where we state our case michelle you tell me why people with schizophrenia have it worse than people with bipolar disorder i'm starting round one you want me to start round one Uh, because you suck you know i can start some round one one out of every 10 people diagnosed with schizophrenia will take their own lives within the first decade of their diagnosis. How do you feel about that one, Gabe? Yeah, it's the exact same stat for people with bipolar disorder. Actually, I think it's a little bit higher for bipolar disorder. It's a 15% death rate, which means that not only will one out of every 10, but then there'll be like a half a person. A half a person will take half his life. Maybe that's because less people get diagnosed with schizophrenia because they don't actually go to the doctor. You ever thought about that? So you're saying that it's worse because you don't get treatment? I mean, how's that fair? I'm just saying much less people with schizophrenia actually do get treatment. So they're saying the diagnosed people is one out of every 10. But what about out of all of the undiagnosed schizophrenics there are, which there are many more undiagnosed schizophrenics than there are undiagnosed people with bipolar. Wait, wait, if they're undiagnosed, how do you know that there are more? Because everybody knows there are more. But really, you're using the everybody knows defense? Yes. Listen, here's why it sucks to have bipolar disorder and why I believe that it is worse to be bipolar than it is to be schizophrenic. I have a middle ground. See, there's, you know, bipolar disorder is extreme lows. I want to die. I'm worthless. Nobody loves me. All the way to extreme highs, mania. I'm king of the world. I'm God. I'm better than everybody. But it's a spectrum illness. So sometimes I'll be right in the middle and I'll be normal. I'll be, I'll, I know, define normal, but I'll, I'll be well, I'll be good. And that's when I get the job, date the girl, save the money, rent the cool apartment, buy the car. You know, all of the things that I lose when I become symptomatic. And in my mind, that is considerably worse than what people with schizophrenia go through because you're just always sick. So you don't have anything to lose because you're constantly sick. That's not true at all. I've experienced all of that. I've been able to accomplish things, but I've also been able to completely ruin situations from being depressed or just being, you know, too talkative. One guy, one boss fired me. He said I was too friendly. I was too chatty in the office. I was in too much of a good mood and chatty. And I was told that I was too friendly in the office and I got in trouble at work because of that. But also, what if I wasn't friendly? What if I was too sad and I was miserable at work and I was unhappy? Then I would probably get fired for, you know, not the right fit. You don't fit in. You're just too unhappy here. You're you're not happy. This is an aside to the suffering Olympics. I want to I want to call it audible and take a break. How schizophrenic can you be if you have a job? I mean, don't people with schizophrenia not work? Well, the thing isn't is, that, I mean, isn't that why it's better? It's easier for you to get like, like, like help because schizophrenia is more serious. So that's why it's worse to be bipolar. No, because I tried to have so many jobs and lost so many jobs because my cognitive skills were so terrible. Oh, cry me a river. You know how many people have fired me, dumped me? Have you been married three times? Have I been married at all? Exactly. Exactly. So but the grandiosity different. of bipolar made me think that I could get married. And then those women left my ass. What about all the guys that just never called me back and just ghosted me? I mean, that's... Are you, Same deal, dude. That, it's ghosting. I, it's ghosting. But, but wait, wait. You just you stuck around that, with the girls and you hung out with them until they left you. I, what about I the mean, guys that, the, that saw me and then didn't want to see me anymore? They're like, I'm done. I'm done. But why is that Why is that tied to schizophrenia and not your horrendous personality? My schizophrenia affects my horrendous personality, I guess. So you agree that it's a horrendous personality? Well, maybe I'm just not very dateable because of the schizophrenia. I second that. Okay, so we have established that both of us 
have depression though. So, so is, is that something that's in common with schizophrenia and bipolar, the depression part? I would assume that when you're depressed, you start thinking horrible things about yourself, right? Constantly, yeah, and, so, and I'm paranoid constantly. And constantly, I've experienced extreme paranoia where I can't get out of bed because I'm thinking so many horrible things, and I'll start thinking back to years and years before where maybe a situation happened, or maybe I'm making it up and I'm making it the biggest deal, and I'm so horribly ashamed of it that I can't wake up and I can't get out of bed because I'm so ashamed of something that happened when I was eight years old, and who cares anymore? Nobody remembers but me, yet I'm so ashamed I can't get out of bed because of it. I'm so Okay, but that's paranoid. a draw. That's a draw then, because people with bipolar disorder can have that symptom as well. I, I, I've, as you know, I have horrible anxiety, horrible paranoia. I've had panic attacks. I've had all of those things. So, so that's that's even. We're just even. That that doesn't make schizophrenia worse or bipolar worse. That's yeah. But you, just, have you just... ever just walked through a group of people and you think everybody in that group of people is all looking at you and staring at you and thinking what a horrible person you are? I'm a six foot three, three hundred pound loud redhead. Yeah, but you don't. They are what... all staring at me. It, but what do you think? Are they thinking good things or thinking bad things? Do you think anybody thinks anything good about me ever? Yes. What do you think? Really? Okay, hang on. I'm going to put you on the spot. You cannot pause. You have to answer instantly. You cannot think. Name one good thing about Gabe Michelle. Go. He's very well spoken. Aww. So you're saying I talk a lot. Thanks. I'm not saying you talk a lot. I'm saying what you say actually can make sense. Can make sense. So it doesn't make sense. Doesn't always make sense. So, and I tell, so, so I tell most you, of the time I just I, I tell I you when you don't make sense. I always tell you. You constantly tell me I don't make sense. But when you do make sense, I understand. You're looking down on me. Like I, you had one thing that I thought I did good, but then you started like with the qualifiers. You can make sense. You babble because often. You, I tell you, you did. when you're bad. Because you did. You said, oh, so I, I say good things or I say bad things. Blah, 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 blah. You started so talking you agree yourself with me. down. See, that's what you did in your bipolar thing. I gave you a compliment and you're like, eh, my compliment isn't even a compliment. Like accept a compliment. So now you're you're mocking me because I, I don't feel like appreciated. By I you? just can't stand it when people won't take a fucking compliment. Take a compliment. Oh, I'm gonna compliment you. Compliment me. You have more charisma than anybody I know. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I think that when you walk into a room and you open your mouth one time, I think people are drawn to you and they want to know what you're doing. That's a very nice compliment. I'm not sure how true that is, but I like that really? compliment. Don't... I don't think Whatever. so. You think Whenever so? we go anywhere, you draw a crowd. I think people are like, who's that loud bitch? Well, but why do you think that? Like, I just, so I, I said that you're charismatic and you think they think you're a loud bitch. No, no, I get charismatic, but I, I, I mean, when I walk into a room, I think that's, you know, some people are like, oh, who's that? But then some people are like, oh my God, bitch, shut the fuck up. I, I think that you are five foot three. You weigh like a buck 20 at best. And you command, you have a commanding presence. I'm six foot three and 300 pounds and I have a commanding presence. We have, as we know, because we've been on stage together, we have an equal command of the audience, but I have an extra 180 pounds and a foot to, to, to command an audience. You do it in your tiny little package, which has nothing to do with bipolar or schizophrenia, but it proves that you can't take a compliment either. No, I can take a compliment. I said it, thank you. I just didn't, I never realized that. So I just was trying to clarify. Really? The, 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 the award-winning podcaster, public speaker who has her own show that is growing, who has been in This Is My Brave, WebMD, who has had all of these accolades, didn't realize that she was charismatic and good at public speaking. Listen, I grew up being told to shut up all the time. So now that it's like weird that people want to listen to me speak, it's hard for me to accept that because I was so constantly told to shut up. Who hurt you, Michelle? I'm not naming names. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's like a whole bunch of people like in both of our families listening right now. That's like, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> she said it. We just edited it out. Now we've made <laughs> other people paranoid. I said nothing. I said nothing. <laughs> This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. 
Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to betterhelp.com forward slash psych central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. Betterhelp.com forward slash psych central. Back to the task at hand. Isn't this stupid? We know people do this. Michelle, when, when I was first diagnosed, I, I went to support groups and I used to think, hey, at least I'm not as sick as them or I'm sicker than they are. I, and and that's, that's why I developed the phrase suffering Olympics, because when I teach people this, I'm like, don't play the suffering Olympics. It, it, it's, it's straight up bullshit. The reality is, is I do think there's things about you, your life that are harder than mine. But I think there's other things that are easier. Yeah, I mean, it's just funny that you kind of like mentioned like the comparison because like every time I was in the psych ward, I was like, I am so not crazy. These people are crazy. I'm not crazy and I don't need to be here. Every single time I was there, I was like, I'm not crazy. These people are crazy. It's funny because it's like, that's not true. I am totally nuts. That's why I'm here. <laughs> You're in a psychiatric ward. That's that's how you know something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, the, the, this is not an uncommon phenomenon. We we talk to, I mean, thousands of people. I mean, from, from social media to in person to people who write about our podcast. And th this is a thing that happens to people, especially when they're first diagnosed, where they want to set up a hierarchy. And, and I, I did it too. And, and you did it too. We're, we're not just like judging people, but it's just... We have this idea that we try to figure out where we fit in. And I, my message is it doesn't matter where you fit in. Stop looking. At, at one of the This Is My Brave, like one of the first meetings we had, we kind of just went around the room and everybody spoke about themselves and was going to say what they were talking about. And I had gone, said that the whole schizophrenia, blah, 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 blah. Then like uh, two people asked me, this other girl starts talking, um, and she was saying how, like, you know, she's lucky to have just depression and anxiety and not something worse, like her grandfather having schizophrenia. And at the end of that, I kind of said, don't really say that you don't have something worse like schizophrenia, because it's pretty offensive to, you know, compare like that. And she got very, very kind of flustered and upset. And I didn't mean to be mean. I was just being honest. And what I realized is just because she only has only, only has you know, you're, only, you're doing it too. You're doing it too. Uh, like, I mean, yeah. no, just because she only had depression and anxiety and not schizophrenia does not mean she's more stable than me. Because I, well, I was actually more stable than her because I was told that night from the, the person that ran it that she called her up crying and felt so horrible about it and was like, should I quit? Oh, God. And just thought about it so much it made her so upset. So, I mean, I'm way more stable than she is and she's not schizophrenic. You know what I'm saying? I'm choosing to hear that story as Michelle made somebody cry. <laughs> 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 but no, I, I know what you mean because I get that way too. You are a great support to me, Michelle. We're a great support to each other. And way back when, when I was in the support groups, I used to think to myself, I'll, I'll, I'll self-disclose, I used to think to myself, thank God I'm not schizophrenic. Because I believe that all of the worst outcomes were people with schizophrenia. And I, I think that there are a lot. I mean, a matter of fact, I, I know they are. There, there are a lot of bad outcomes with people with schizophrenia. So if you're trying to set up a hierarchy, I, I suppose the data does show that a schizophrenia diagnosis is, quote, worse than a bipolar diagnosis. But if you're the sick one, who cares? I, I mean, who cares? I, I've suffered from psychosis. We've both been depressed. We've both been suicidal. We've both been in the psych ward. We've both hurt our families. We, we've both been paranoid. We've both been delusional. But hey, at the end of the day, you're worse because your disease is called something different than mine. Yeah. And also, like, also, you know what gets me? I think I brought this up before. When you take an antipsychotic and then you tell someone that you take an antipsychotic and they go, you're psychotic? So, so that's the fascinating part to me as well. So we've got major depression, bipolar, schizoaffective disorder, uh, schizophrenia, you know, anxiety disorders, OCDs, all of these mental illnesses and all things that, that deny people a quality of life. They interfere with the activities of daily living, which is how you end up with a diagnosis and people are suffering because of it and they're trying to get help and when we get the help the first thing that we do is want to make sure that somebody is worse off than us or make sure that we're better off than somebody else however you want to spin it well, what we should actually be doing 
And what I finally learned after literally years is I need to figure out what I have in common. And that's how I learned that like Michelle and I, you know, even though we have completely different diagnoses, even though we live in completely different cities, completely different states, we're different genders. Michelle is short. I'm tall. I don't know what that has to do with anything. I, don't worry. I'm the Jewish girl. And, and Michelle is the Jewish girl and, and I am not. Mm -hmm. We have so much in common. And if we would have gotten, if I would have thought to myself, because we don't have the same diagnosis, we have nothing to learn from each other we would have not learned a lot from each other and we never would have gotten around to doing this podcast, which I think would have been a tragedy. So I think that Michelle and I deserve some sort of maybe like Emmy, maybe like an Emmy. What, what kind of awards do they give like for like podcasts? Like we deserve that because we're so good. You think our podcast is that great? Listen, give me a fucking award. Okay. I'll, I'll give you an award. What are you going to give me? It's, it's going to be um, the people's court choice award. <laughs> the people's course it, instead of like you know how like television has an emmy so for podcasts it should be like a pemmy a penny a pemmy a pemmy okay a p-e-m-m-y why don't you just start that award and give the first one to yourself instead of a golden globe it could be like a golden dining room table with microphones on it okay these jokes are really not funny i'm gonna fire the um ginger Whatever religion you are, man. You can't fire me. But I See, need that would have been a better comeback to that guy. I should have said, I can't fire her. She's my partner. Ah, oh, that would have been much no, better. No, you should have said, I can't fire her. She's the one who's in charge and she makes all the money. Well, I'm not going to lie to the guy. Well, I, you should have put me on a status of like that I'm better than you. Or like, I, I you should have been like, she comes up with all of the ideas and does all of the editing and makes does all of the work. And she tells me what to say. And she helps me. She runs the whole thing. She just said that. Again, you wanted me to lie to the guy in order to defend you. <laughs> yes. I don't think anything you said there was true. You've never made me say anything. We sh we come up with the ideas together. You don't know how to edit nothing. Like, like for real. You don't even know how to like censor your own speech, let alone edit a podcast. You should have, you should have told him about the horns that I have. You should have been like, yeah, I had to file down her horns. That, but that's not because you're Jewish. It's because you're evil. Evil. Michelle, what is the takeaway? Why do people with mental illness spend so much time trying to figure out if they're sicker or not as sick as somebody else? I have a belief that it's because we want to feel better about ourselves and it's easiest to do it at somebody else's expense. Like you said about, I'm not crazy. Because after all, if you're going to be in a psychiatric ward, at least you're not these people. Even though you were. Yes. We were. Yes. Yes, Does it, you're right. No, I. what you said is very, very accurate. People just compare themselves to other people to make themselves feel better. I mean, like they said in Mean Girls, you know, just calling somebody ugly doesn't make you any prettier. Calling somebody else stupid doesn't make you any smarter. And then somebody calling somebody else crazy doesn't make you any more sane. I appreciate that you are getting your philosophical wisdom from god-awful movies. No, so my hat is that was written by Tina Fey, excuse me. I, I do love Tina Fey, but sincerely, you have access to some of the greatest museums and literature in the entire country, and you just quoted Tina Fey. She sees Russia from her house. Okay, that's not funny. But, okay. It's funny! Mean Girls is the greatest movie that was ever made. I saw it when I was 16. I was the prime audience for it, and as I watched that movie, I've never seen something more accurate about my life on the screen. So shut up. You, you told me to shut up. Yeah, I, yeah, you can talk now. But you know that quote, that little quotey thing that I just said was genius. Is it genius? It was genius. Can you define genius? Me. Picture of me. I don't realize, I, I realize the mean girls probably didn't say this, but calling yourself genius also <laughs> doesn't make you a genius. <laughs> Michelle, do you have any words of wisdoms for the people before we get out of here? Please don't tell Gabe to fire me. 
All right, everybody. Well, we are going to head out of here. Remember, head over to iTunes or wherever you get this podcast and leave us a review. If you type in words, it definitely works better. Please share on social media. Email your friends. Remember, this is the first podcast for people with mental illness, by people with mental illness. And as always, we are still selling the Define Normal t-shirts until we run out or make a million dollars, whichever comes first. You can head over to store.psychcentral.com com and buy your very own Define Normal shirt. It helps keep the show afloat. We will see everybody next week. I'm not crazy. You've been listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. If you love this episode, don't keep it to yourself. Head over to iTunes or your preferred podcast app to subscribe, rate, and review. To work with Gabe, go to GabeHoward.com. To work with Michelle, go to Schizophrenic.nyc. For free mental health resources and online support groups, head over to psychcentral.com. The show's official website is psychcentral.com slash BSP. You can email us at show at psychcentral.com. Thank you for listening and share widely.